Well, good afternoon and welcome to our Easter Day worship. Uh, apologies for not broadcasting from the church, but we had a uh, an internet failure, so we weren't able to record this morning. Do apologise for that, but uh, we are here and the Lord is here as well. And we say together, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. They were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. Alleluia. Let's just take a moment to... Think of those that were in church this morning and those that weren't able to be there as well. Think of somebody that uh, you know well and just pray for God's blessing to be on them this Easter morn. And then we're going to hear a traditional hymn as we celebrate the resurrection together. Jesus said to his disciples, My Father's will is that all who look to the Son and believe in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. 
Confident of his power to forgive, we confess together our sins in penitence and faith. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we're afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we're slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Christ, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Say these words of the collect together. God, God of, of glory, glory, by the by raising, raising of, of your Son, you, you broke, broke the chains of death and hell. hell. Fill your, your church, church with faith and hope, hope for a new day has dawned, and the, the way, way to life stands open. In our Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. And so as we stand with those who witnessed the empty tomb of the Lord, let's declare our faith in the truth of the risen Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to new life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. After he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles, this we have received and this we believe. And so on this Easter morning, we here together, words from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. And I'm going to read um, small chunks and then um, just explain as we go along how uh, I unpacked this passage this morning in our sermon. Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. We begin our reading this morning with the divine pleasure and acceptance of God. That divine favour underpins our whole understanding of the gospel. Remember John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. We're about to hear in this passage from Acts how Jesus lived a complete human life. He experienced the depths of human suffering and he experienced all that there was to be human. And as he did that, he took on our humanity to the extent that I don't know how you think of God, but I know that there is a little of human experience in the Godhead that when I speak to God, he understands what it is to be human. For in Christ, he bore the whole of human existence. The passage continues, you know, the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. We know what it is to have promises that are made that we have to wait for. It's a number of weeks ago now that Boris stood up and said, we have a roadmap to unlocking the lockdown. He didn't promise that it was all going to happen, but he said these are the dates that we are aiming for. And in the same way, in the Old Testament, when we read the words of the prophets, we read God's promises, God's roadmap to unlocking. And what God is seeking to unlock is all of our hurt and our pain, all that separates us from him. And we are told in this passage that the good news of peace is that all of this has been achieved in what Jesus has done for us. 
as the passage continues, you know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that Jesus preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went about doing good and healing all those under the power of the devil, because God was with him. I just want to pick a few words from this paragraph. Jesus went about doing good. He proved that he was God's sent Messiah in what he did. It was his actions that spoke of God's love even more than his words. So much so that in the Gospel of John, the miracles of Jesus are called signs. They are signs of God's work on the earth. And if we think about this year that we have just gone through, it's not all been bad news. We have seen signs of God at work in the rainbows that have appeared in people's windows, in the parcels that have been delivered to the vulnerable, in the phone calls and the love, and even in the wearing of masks. These have all been signs of love for the world. And in St Stephen's there have been a good number of us that have been able to demonstrate God's love in these practical ways. Only last week there were families coming into church to receive meals because we wanted to demonstrate God's love to them. And so our actions are a reflection of the love of God that we saw in Jesus when he walked the earth and he performed miracles, he performed healings, he demonstrated the love of God in action as well as word. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. We say, don't we, he is risen, and everyone responds, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. These simple words are the most profound words that we could imagine. In order for Jesus to be risen from the dead, he first had to die. And as he dies on the cross, he carries in his life on his shoulders all of the agonies and pain and suffering of human existence. I don't know how you've been this last year but I've had plenty that has upset me and has caused me distress. And this Easter tide we are reminded that he took all of our infirmities and he carried all of our weaknesses that he was a man of sorrow, yet was without sin. All of human sin was placed on his shoulders. Sin being that aspect of the world that is broken, that harms others, that causes pain and distress. We could call it evil. We could describe it as the work of the devil. And in this passage, we are reminded that Jesus healed all that were under the power of the devil. And on the cross, he took to himself all that evil was seeking to achieve and replaced it with the joy of his risen life on that third day. And he came and stood amongst the disciples who ate with him and drank with him and were convinced of his life. Now that doesn't mean that their lives went on to be absolutely perfect. We are told that 11 of the 12 disciples were martyred for their faith and yet they could still speak of receiving God's life. They still suffered 
But the difference was that in their suffering, they knew God's strength. And that is my prayer for us, that we would carry around the strength of God in our bodies. That knowing that Jesus is alive would mean that whatever we have to face, we can face it knowing that we're strong in the Lord. I'll give you a practical example of that. My previous curate was a beautiful priest. She led services in such a gentle way. And yet she had such pain in her body. She had pain in her jaw and she suffered with pain in her joints that just would not go away. Of course she prayed that the Lord would heal her, but she was still carrying that pain. But in the midst of her pain, she knew the strength and the joy of the Lord. People like that should inspire us in our faith as we seek to be strong. Sometimes the Lord does change the situation that we're in and bring joy and bring an end to the suffering. But at other times, we're simply holding on to him in the midst and knowing that he is with us is the thing that gives us strength. That's the thing that we witness to. But the Lord stands in the upper room and says to his disciples, peace be with you. He doesn't promise that everything is going to be perfect from then on, but he does promise his peace. And they carry that peace to the ends of the earth, as we are about to hear in this next part of the passage, as we bring our short reflection to an end. Jesus commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. May the risen Lord give you his strength this day. And may you know through his name, that you are reconciled to God, that you can come and sit with God, receiving all that he has to give you, and that this is the message that we proclaim to the world, a world that needs what we've got, a world that can only receive it if we are prepared to, like the disciples, be witnesses to what God has done as we sit and eat with him. We're going to pray now. So let us pray. On this Easter Sunday, as we remember and rejoice that our Lord is indeed risen, we thank you, Father, for the transforming power of the resurrection. In a year where the world has seen much sorrow, pain and darkness, hope was always there, because you were and are always with us. You never left us, even in the darkest of times. As the darkness of the tomb gives way to the light of the resurrection, so your light shines into our world and into our lives bringing hope and dispelling fear. Many people have carried your light this last year. Those who work tirelessly to produce vaccines, essential workers serving us, the kindness of neighbours and strangers alike, the silent prayers of many. As Easter people, may we continue to tell your story through our lives and words. In a hurting world, may we point to the one who has overcome, to the one who offers us life, abundant and eternal. Lord,
behold, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. King of King and Lord of Lords, we pray for all in authority, in whatever capacity. The life of Jesus and the events of Holy Week show us the true nature of leadership, of one who serves, who cares for the marginalised, who encourages and empowers people. We also see that leadership can be lonely and misunderstood. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and our government, for world leaders, especially at this testing time of the pandemic, juggling the health and protection of the nation with economic recovery. We pray for countries that are already struggling, but whose fragile economy and limited health care has been compounded by COVID. Lord, we are one world, your world. How we live affects our brothers and sisters, and how we get through this current crisis affects the whole world. May we emerge a kinder, fairer world, truly loving our neighbour as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Living Lord, we give thanks that many churches across the land have once again opened their doors for worship this Easter Sunday. But Lord, this last year, with various lockdowns and people shielding, it's been a huge reminder that we are the church wherever we are, gathered or scattered. So we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, often unable to meet. For those who feel wary of emerging from lockdown. For those who are in care homes or hospital, or who are too frail to be able to enjoy the freedom and fellowship they once had. Easter breaks through all that we undergo in our lives and tells us of the good news that Jesus is alive and that we can know him. In him, we have purpose and calling, a future and new life. May we continue to encourage each other in the faith, recognising the gifts and abilities that you have given to each one of us as we work together in furthering your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, you place us in community reminding us of our dependence on one another, to live, work and to be together as we journey through life. Often in times of trial and hardship, we see community at its best and this last year has been no exception. Many people have found opportunities to befriend others, to serve their neighbours, to have unearthed the gifts and abilities you have given them and they have flourished as they use them. Open our eyes to the needs of our community, especially as we emerge from the various stages of lockdown. As various clubs and groups plan and consider how they may be able to meet safely once again, we pray, Lord, that new people may be drawn in that they may feel a sense of belonging and that our community here at Bush Fair and here at St Stephen's may become places where they encounter the living God reflected in the loving service of others. We give thanks for the holiday hunger clubs that are meeting this week, offering fun and food to young families during the school holidays through relationships that are being forged, for meals that are being shared, for laughter and fun that is being had, we thank you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate God, who wept and who healed, 
we bring before you those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. We remember those who have been mentioned by name in our prayer chain requests and those whose needs are known to you alone. And so we offer to you our own prayers for our family, friends or ourselves. We pray for those who care for our communities, for those whose work in care settings, education and frontline workers, who may be feeling the weight of working through the pandemic, that they may find rest and recuperation. May we be mindful too of the sense of loss that may begin to surface as we regain some of our freedom the realisation that members of our community are no longer with us as we begin to learn to live without them. And we pray for those who are coming to the end of their lives, that the promise of Easter, of death being conquered and eternal life offered, may bring comfort and peace to them and their loved ones. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, <clears throat> aware of the presence of the risen Christ and confident of all that he has brought for us, let's share together in the words that Jesus taught his disciples to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. His arm has done His mercy sure From age to age the same His holy name The Lord, the mighty one Tell out my soul The greatness of His might Power
So let's say once more, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. May God, the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to us who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. May God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory, give us joy as we share the Easter message. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower us and fill us with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and throughout this season of Easter. Amen. Amen. We're raised to new life with Christ. Go in his peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.